brothers, I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope, and this is the faith that I go back to the South with. Our nation split over the issues of slavery and a terrible civil war. Many African Americans, some of whom had just escaped slavery, formed a unit known as the 54th Massachusetts Regiment. By all accounts, the unit had high morale, even though the Confederate president at the time, Jefferson Davis, promised death to any member of the regiment <coughs> who was captured, and even though those soldiers were only paid half as much as whites at the time. But as the men of the Massachusetts Regiment marched through many small towns in South Carolina, former slave chief, their victory meant that men and women of color no longer had to live as slaves. But though slavery had been abolished, uh, it was still a long battle for African Americans who continued to serve, serve with distinction and honor in a country which treated them as second class citizens. They served in the Western Plains as the legendary Buffalo soldiers. And as our nation fought its first major overseas war, thousands of African Americans were called into service, many served on the front lines. One group of famed African American soldiers uh, was a regiment which came to be known as the Harlem Hellfighters. Many whites did not want to serve alongside blacks, so they were attached to the French army for the duration of that war. Um, the French treated them as they would any other army unit, so they integrated them immediately. And from that unit, two African Americans were awarded the Medal of Honor, our nation's highest award for battle. It completely surprised the War Department especially because no one at the time trusted African Americans with weapons and basic training. They went through their entire basic training back then without touching a rifle, which is, I think about it, would be pretty hard, but we did it. Um, and whenever they simulated combat and training, they held broomsticks and yelled bang. Not necessarily um, doing a you know, realistic training that we expect our troopers to do today. So you would think someone would have taken note and incorporated African Americans into the military, but they didn't. In fact, the War Department commissioned studies, and I use the word studies extremely loosely, uh, claiming that African Americans were unfit for military service, especially aviation. Now, as someone with over 1,700 hours in the cockpit of a Black Hawk helicopter, I can personally attest that's not true. <laughs> I'm a ninth grade student at the White Plains High School, and she said, while it should not matter, I would like to mention that I am a white girl. I read in the paper of your misfortune and of your suffering, and I read that if you had sneezed, you would have died. And I'm simply rising to say that I'm happy that you did not sneeze. And I want to say tonight, I want to say tonight that I'm happy I did not sneeze. Because if I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been around here in 1960 when students all over the South started sitting at lunch counters. And I knew that as they were sitting in, they were really standing up for the best in the American dream and taking the whole nation back to those great wells of democracy which were dug deep by the founding fathers of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been around here in 1961 when we decided to take a ride for freedom and ended segregation in interstate travel. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been around here in 1962 when Negroes in Albany, Georgia decided to straighten up their backs. Whenever a man and woman straighten up their back, they're going somewhere because a man can't ride your back unless it is a bend. If I had sneezed, if I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been here in 1963 when the black people of Birmingham, Alabama aroused the conscience of this nation and brought into being the Civil Rights Bill. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have, been, I wouldn't have had a chance later that year in August to try and tell America about a dream I had had. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been down in Selma, Alabama to see the great movement there. If I had sneezed, I wouldn't have been in Memphis to see a community rally around those brothers and sisters who are suffering. I 
I'm so happy that I did this meet. And they were telling me, now it doesn't matter, now. It really doesn't matter what happens now. I left Atlanta this morning, and as we got started on the plane, there were six of us. The pilot said over the public address system, we are sorry for the, for the delay, but we have Dr. Martin Luther King on the plane. And to be sure that all of the bags were checked, and to be sure that nothing would be wrong with, the, with on the plane, we had to check out everything carefully. And we've had the plane protected and guarded all night. And then I got into Memphis, and some began to say the threats, or talk about the threats that were out. What would happen to me from some of our sick white brothers? Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead, but it really doesn't matter with me now, because I've been to the mountaintop, and I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But, it's, but I'm not concerned with that now. I'm just, I just want to do God's will. He's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. And I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we, as people, will get to the promised land. And I am so happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Thank you. I hope you all the same. We shall.